Good morning and welcome to Community of Faith. It is our first day of services in the new year, 2021. Let's give it up for 2021. Good news. So as you think of 2021, I want you to look back and think, what are you thankful for for 2020? I know there's things to give reason for thanksgiving to God. And then what are you hopeful for for the, the season of 2021? So go ahead and put that on the screen and and let us know what things that you're thankful for and what you're looking for for 2021 would be great. I know for last year, for instance, for myself, I was so thankful that my son Caleb got a, got a job. He's starting his job starting tomorrow. And so we're just so thankful that the Lord provided in 2020. And then 2021, well, I'm hopeful and I'm ready to give thanks to God for the baby. I can't wait to, for 2021 to be a grandparent. And I know that there are many things for you that I know you're hopeful for for this new year and also thankful. So in, as we begin worship, you'll notice that if you have your song sheets at home, we're going to be singing We Three, Think, we Three Kings. But right after that, we'll be singing 10,000 Reasons. And so as you sing at home, let's find ways to bless the Lord and give thanks to him. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your presence with us in the midst of the storm and the season of COVID in 2020. We're thankful for how you've been faithful in the midst. And Lord, we also look forward to your presence with us in 2021, and we're hopeful. So fill our, our hearts with hope, fill our hearts with worship as we've come together at this moment in 2021 on January 3rd to worship you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our service begins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's sing. I'm so grateful for a new day that we can bless the Lord. So let's just sing it with everything within us. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah. 
Well, this morning we get to hear the Word of God, and we have two readings this morning, one from Psalms and one from Matthew. And so I invite you to get your Bibles out, and our first reading from Psalm 63. And one of the things that we hear in Psalm 63 is this, what is better than life? You get the answer in just a moment. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And at home, wherever you are, and if you're in a place where you could do this, we invite you in reverence to Christ to please stand for the gospel. And the gospel comes from Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 through 12. And here we're going to learn three things that the wise men did that are wise things for us to do in this new season in 2021. Hear this story. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star, and when it rose, have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I, that I too may go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was, they saw the star and they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. For our, a song that's going to precede our message today, it's called Alabaster. And this scripture I'd like to read right before that comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, that says this, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Alabaster. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, penetrate our hearts. Sometimes our hearts are hard. Our minds are hard too. And we ask, oh God, that 
you may soften our hearts, that you would allow our minds to be open to your holy word this, e- this morning. And Lord, that you may change us for this new season ahead. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to sh- share with you some Bible trivia. So if you have some time right now, you could write down these things. I'd like to give you 10 trivia questions, Bible trivia that have to do with the wise men. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So these are pretty easy. I know that you guys are Bible scholars. You know this, but this is just good for us to know this story about the wise men. So number one, what other name was given for the wise men? Answer, go ahead and write it down. See if you get it right. Answer, magi. Number two, how many wise men are mentioned in the Bible? Anybody know? Was it three? Was it two? Was it 16? We don't know. Number three, where did they come from and how far did they have to travel? Answer? Yeah, these are tough answers. There's not much given to us in Scripture. We know that they came from the East. And we know it was probably a far distance away. But other than that, we don't know. Some have speculated it was maybe 800 to 1,000 miles away. Maybe in Babylon because there was prophecy of the, the Messiah to come in the book of Daniel. Thinking maybe they were people that knew of this. They were coming from Babylon. That would be about 800 miles away. Number four, how did they find their way? How did the wise men find their way to Jesus? Did they have a map? They looked to the star, didn't they? It's interesting to note that on December 21st, 2020, two planets came into alignment that night and was coined as the Christmas star. And so in December 21st, 2020, when these two planets aligned, what were the names of those two planets? Answer? Jupiter and Saturn. Next question. Number six. What were the wise men seeking? They came from afar. But what were they seeking? Matthew chapter 2, 2 says this. Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? They were looking for the king of the Jews, the Messiah to come. Number seven, who were these wise men? We really don't know. Some think they were astrologists because they followed the star and mapped it out so they knew where to go. Number eight, how old was Jesus when visited by the wise men? Again, we don't know, but in the story that was just read in Matthew chapter 2, we, we hear this, that Herod was looking to kill the Messiah. And so we found out that his age would have been two years or younger. And so how old was Jesus when visited by the wise men? Under two years old. Number nine, where did they find Jesus? Did they find him in the stable? Did they find him in a cave? Did they find them out where the sheep might be? Scripture says this too. Where did they find Jesus? The story says they, they found Jesus not in a stable, but a house in Bethlehem. Not as an infant, a very small child just born, but as a child, two years or younger. And number 10, what gifts did the wise men give to Jesus when they came? There's three gifts, oftentimes why they think there was three wise men, but we really do not know. But we do know what the gifts were. The gifts were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
significance of this, we don't know. We just know this to be true. All the scholars will agree on this, that the gifts that the wise men, the magi gave to this child Jesus, our Messiah, were valuable gifts, very costly, valuable gifts. Other theologians and those will say that these gifts had great significance, that they pointed to what the Messiah was all about. Gold given to a king, frankincense given to a priest, and myrrh given to a prophet. So we see the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the one that came is both prophet, priest, and king. And so today I'd like to share with you a message about the wise men, a, a message that will help us in 2021. So you see, the wise men, the Magi, did something back then in 2,000 years ago that we need to emulate, something that we need to follow in 2021. And I'd like to share those three things with you right now. And I pray that we'd put those three things into practice starting today, just as the wise men did so long ago. So let's take a look at that. What did the wise men do 2,000 years ago that we're called to do today? The first one is to seek. To seek. Well, I've learned a lot about seeking in the last, I would say, the mo this last month of December during the Christmas season, shopping for Christmas presents for all the children and for my wife, I went to a different source. I would go to Amazon and I would spend hours on Amazon looking for the right gift at the right time for the right person. And so I spent hours, I sometimes days on Amazon looking for each of our children, trying to find the perfect gift. And then after Christmas, you'd think it would be all done. Then, I, then it's returning presents. And I would also be looking for presents for myself. For instance, I've looked for hours for two per, uh, specific gifts. My children bought me a snowboard jacket and it was slightly long. So I spent a couple of days and many hours looking for this valued possession of finding a snowboard jacket, looking online, looking at Amazon, going shopping, and I finally found it. And then lately, even last night, I was looking for this little heater unit that go, would go into this broken down uh, electric fireplace that we have in our house and to put something in there that would look pretty decent, and that would look like a fireplace element. I looked for hours in the last couple of days. What is all this to say? The wise men came seeking. And we do the same thing. We seek all the times. The Lord Jesus Christ said this, he said this that is instructive for us. In Luke 9, 9 and 10, Jesus says this about seeking. He says this, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. It's a promise from Jesus. One is to be open and honest with what we are already doing. And so my question, just as I shared my confession before you, what are you seeking? Are you seeking more dollars, more power, more influence, more recognition, more possessions, more stuff? And I will say to you and to me, good luck with that. Seeking what the world has to offer will disappoint you. Let me say that again. Seeking what the world has to offer of itself will disappoint you. It will not satisfy. Only God will satisfy. And I believe it was worthwhile for the wise men. They came seeking 
and they came to seek God. It is a worthwhile quest that has benefits that outweigh anything that this world has to offer. And so here, the first thing that the wise men did, they came seeking. They came seeking a savior. They came seeking God. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is, if that's a wise thing to do, to seek, then how do we go about doing that practically in our lives today? So I'd like to suggest this one thing. There's many others, but I don't want to get caught up in the weeds and give you too many things. I encourage you to do this. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ by reading Scripture and praying daily. And so, even though we're on January 3rd, there's something that I have done for years now. I think six straight years. And I've used something that was taught to me by my mom. And so I'll just give this to you. Many of you have heard this before, but it's an encouragement to you to get started. I encourage you to read God's word on a daily basis, but sometimes that's very difficult. Where do you start? Where do you go? So here's two modes. One that I did last year, it's called the Daily Bible in Chronological Order, 365 Daily Bible Readings. And this was a great guide and way for me to know exactly what I was going to read in Scripture on a daily basis. And it just became a priority for me. It became a prized possession of something that I did as I sought the Lord by getting in his word. And something that I've done in years past, I've used what is called the Daily Walk Bible, where you're reading Scripture six days out of seven, has a devotion attached to it, and you learn through it. And it's a wonderful way to read Scripture. And then, just days ago, a member of our church, his name is John Stoops, he sent me something, and then I sent it to the congregation by email, and you received it. And it's a Bible app that you can get, and it had 12 different Bible reading plans. So if you don't want to read so much on a daily basis, you could take a variety. There's one that's reading through the Bible chronologically, one that reads through the Bible from Genesis through Revelation. There's another one that you read through an Old Testament reading and a New Testament reading. There's another one where you read Old Testament, New Testament, and a psalm. And there's the one that just goes through the Gospels and goes through it slow. But what I'm saying to you is I encourage you today to look and to find a way to seek the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis because I believe that's exactly what the Lord wants us to do. And here's the reality. This is good news. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that sought us out. He would leave the 99 waiting and go and searching for the last one. And he would look for the lost one. And this is the attitude and the behavior and the nature and the love of our God that he has for us. And scripture says, throughout scripture, it says this, we are God's prized possession. And he's continuing to seek us out, to show us ways that he loves us. So what did the wise men do? They spent time, they spent energy seeking God and looking for Jesus and number two, when they found him, when they found Jesus, what did they do? It's the second thing that I believe in 2021 is something that he wants us to do, even if it's remote, remotely or just through a video screen, is to worship him. What did the wise men do? The wise men worship the Lord Jesus. Scripture says in this story, they bowed down and they worshiped the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe today there are so many things that we worship. And if it's not God, it's going to be something else. We are all predisposed to worship something or someone and for many of us, it's a variety of things. But Scripture says that we are called to love the Lord above all things. 
And number one thing that God wants us to do is to worship him. And so what the wise men did, the wise men worshiped Jesus. And he's calling us to worship him, not just by ritual, but worshiping him with our hearts in coming to him. So what did the wise men do? They sought the Lord. They came seeking. They spent a lot of time doing it. And he con- it's a continual thing. Number two, what did the wise men do? They worshiped God. They didn't worship things. They worshiped God. And the third thing I'd like to share with you is what they did. They gave gifts. What did they give gifts? They gave of gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. And it points to who this Jesus is all about. And just as our God gives us great gifts, he's calling us to be good gift givers as well. And what did God do? It says this in James 1.17. I love this. I've used this on Christmas cards. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. The greatest gift that our God has given to us is our Savior Jesus Christ for us to be received. And our greatest giver is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He continues to give, give, and give. And so let us get in the practice in 2021 to give good gifts. And how do we know what good gifts are? The wise men were really appropriate in their gifts. They gave valuable gifts to the Lord of those gifts of myrrh and frankincense and gold. Sometimes it's hard to know what we are to give because what do you give God? He has everything And yet the number one gift that we can give to God, all of you know this. I've learned this in my relationships with family. I know that gift giving is fun on Christmas, but the greatest gift I can give to my kids is myself. The greatest gift that I can give to my spouse is myself. And the greatest gift that we can give to God is ourself to him. I think the wise men, they had some wise words And they had some wise gifts. And they had some wise wisdom for us in 2021. So let's do that in 2021. Let's seek the Lord together. There's opportunities. Get into a small group, even if it's a Zoom study. Come and find someone that you can be encouraged with and read scripture with them. Meet with them for coffee, even from a distance. Maybe it's Maybe it's this way, if just uh, through a Zoom Bible study. There's one that's starting up on Epiphany, on the day of Epiphany, which is January the 6th. We invite you to do that as well. Study the book of uh, Philippians. And so, as we close here today, we don't need to go continually seeking like I was doing. Seeking all the wrong places to find what is most important. Let's follow the example of our God who came seeking us, always coming to us. That's our God. And he's calling us to seek him more than all and to worship him and to give good gifts, not only to him which is ourselves, but to give gifts to others that represent him well. So let's pray this morning as we continue And then also to receive the best gift that God has to give himself to us as we celebrate Holy Communion this morning. God gives us this great gift of himself in Jesus Christ and we get to celebrate it daily on a regular basis of Holy Communion. May we receive Jesus with fullness, with faith. And as we get ready for communion, let us do what the wise men did. Let's crown him with many crowns. Let's worship him as we give gifts. And let's sing.
Celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the good gifts that you give us, most importantly for your Son, Jesus Christ, and the gift that we get to celebrate on a regular basis of Holy Communion, that we may remember what your Son, Jesus, has done for us and for this world to come to us to save us from our sin and unite us back to you. Lord, may we receive this gift. Cleanse us from all sin, Lord. Remind us of what is most important. And Lord, through this gift, Lord, as we receive it in faith, may you strengthen us to seek you. May you strengthen us to worship you. May you strengthen us, Lord, to give good gifts, gifts that are approved by you. Holy and acceptable in your sight. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so I invite you at this time to take the bread that you have with you and to take it. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So I invite you to take the cup and you can serve it to someone that's right next to you or to yourself. You say, I say to you, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we are ready to close our service today, there is a song that we're ready to sing. It's called Graves into Gardens. 
And what it is, is a song that proclaims the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he not only died for us, he rose for us. He gives us hope for 2021, hope that we can count on, hope that we can stand on, hope where we can continue to seek him and know that he, we can be found in him. So let's sing. It's called Graves into Gardens. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Mounds empty plains Treasures that fade I never enough And you came along you Put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. To show me my weakness My failures and flaws But you've seen them all Can you still call me a friend? Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing that's better than you. dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn graves into gardens you turn bones into armies highways you're the only one who can oh there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Next week, we start a new sermon series. It's called Speak Life. And for us to hear the words of our God who speak life to us and for us to receive it and give it away to others. So I invite you to be with us next Saturday and Sunday. We are doing worship here in person at the corner at four o'clock and we invite you to reserve your spot for that. And then we'll be streaming live on, Sat on Sundays at 10 a.m. Receive the blessing of our God. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.